we're going to have a jolly romp through Lady C's book, Harry and Meghan, The Real Story today. And of course, she goes right back to the beginning of their early childhoods. And it's a fascinating insight because you can see their characters forming and and uh, what sort of person they were developing into, which is fascinating. But one thing she did did say that grabbed my attention was that Harry was primed to fall in love with someone like Meghan by his mum, Diana. But she does sort of illustrate why she thinks this is true. She more or less points out that Meghan shares a lot of Diana's characteristics but not necessarily any of the good ones. (laughs) So all the bad ones she shares. One of the ones she uses as an example is the fact that Diana used to ghost people. She used to discard family and friends. Um, Often they would not know why. They would be on the outer, they would get the cold shoulder and they wouldn't know what had happened or why or what they'd done. And as we know, Megan in the Urban Dictionary um, is that to be Megan Markle is to be ghosted or discarded when you're of no further use. I should say before I go on, in the interests of fairness, that there is another uh, definition in the Urban Dictionary of Megan Markle now, and it's about valuing your mental health and leaving a situation when you're not being appreciated or valued for your authentic self. So which one do you think is more relevant? The the looking after your mental health and not being valued and appreciated for your authentic self? Or the one about ghosting people and discarding them when they no longer are any use to you? Hmm, tough decision. Let me know in the comments down below. The other thing that was really interesting about Lady C's book was the fact that there had been discussion with Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth about the prospect of Harry marrying Meghan. And from Harry's book, I sort of got the impression that other than bumping into the Queen and the curtsy thing at Royal Lodge, an afternoon tea with the Queen that actually went very well and Harry asking the Queen on a hunting weekend, shooting weekend, whether he could marry Meghan. Actually, if you don't know that story in Spare, it's quite interesting. So he's gone out for the shooting weekend and in the car on the way up there, um, William and, and Prince Charles are in the front. And Prince Charles chooses that time to basically complain that if he's intending to marry Meghan, that he can't afford to support her and that she should keep on acting. <laughs> So, but obviously what Prince Charles didn't realise was, was that um, Gina Northup Cowan, her London agent, prior to meeting Harry, had more or less broken the news to Meghan that she couldn't find her anything that things had dried up pretty severely and that there wasn't a lot on the horizon. So, Charles, that was a dead end, love. There was no way that she was going to be able to support herself and her clothing budget through her acting. So he heads off to the shooting weekend fully intending to ask the Queen for permission to ask Meghan to marry him because he'd been told by courtiers that being six in line to the throne, he had to ask the Queen. So on this shooting weekend, he bides his time, can't seem to to get her alone at all. And then finally, at the end of the shoot, the Queen is stomping out into the wet field in her wellies and her headscarf and collecting dead birds and with her dogs, her hunting dogs. So Harry grabs the opportunity and goes and joins Granny out in the field and and uh, heads back to her lorry, not lorry, Land Rover, with the dead birds, one in each hand, and proceeds to say, Granny, I love Megan very much and I've been told I have to ask you if, if I can ask her to marry me. And the Queen, tongue in cheek, says, well... I guess I'll have to say yes then. 